Welcome back to The Horror of the Horde with your hostess with the mostest, Jenna, as always. Welcome back, guys. Thank you for checking me out, as always. I appreciate it. So today what I'm going to be uh, discussing is, if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, I uh, watched last night Unearthed and Untold, The Path to Pet Cemetery, the uh, documentary about uh, the making of uh, the movie Pet Cemetery, obviously. Um, and honestly... I was really looking forward to this, and I gotta say, this was a very well done documentary. Um, you know, it just it literally talks so much about the movie, process of the movie, and it literally has almost everyone that uh, worked on the movie, uh, actors, uh, directors, obviously, producers, and stuff. Literally almost has everyone, with the exception of Fred Gwynn, obviously, who passed away, um, you know, like, 24 years ago, back in 93. And I was a little disappointed. Like, they didn't have Stephen King in this, but, you know, probably for whatever reason. Uh, I know Stephen King doesn't do a whole lot of um, discussions in too many of his, like, documentaries or anything. So he probably was just like, dude, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing this one. But, you know, it would be nice to see or hear, you know, some of uh, Stephen King's experiences. Because I know he was pretty heavily, um, well, I shouldn't say it, like heavily, but I know he did work a little bit on this movie. I know he had the little cameo in the uh, funeral scene and everything. But, you know, I'm always kind of, like, interested in hearing what he, like, really has to say about a lot of his movies. Actually, every one of his movies that was um, adapted from his books and everything. I would just love to hear. I know he's not a fan of all of the movies that have been done. Like The Shining and stuff. But it'd be nice to see. Um, but yeah. Like this was just a really good movie. Or movie. Really good documentary. Like I said. It really you know went to detail about a lot of stuff. Like um, you know discussed about like the um, like the first uh, the, the company that they were trying to bring it to. Uh, it wasn't. Arista, ah, oh, man, dude, this is going to drive me nuts now. Um, it wasn't Vetrex. I don't think it was Vetrex. But it was it was one of the more, like, well-known of the uh, 80s. Um, and they were like, we didn't want to do this. So then they went to uh, the lady who kind of had, like, the rights to this, uh, started working at Paramount, talked about how she was trying to get it up there and everything. And at first they were like, nope, nope, nope. Um, but yeah, like it just, you know, goes into great detail about a lot of stuff. Um, you know, like I said, they have almost all the cast, pretty much all the cast, um, you know, with the exception of, of Fred Gwynn and obviously Stephen King, which I mean, no worries, like, you know, not going to be that stingy about it. Plus, like I said, I mean, Fred Gwynn's been, um, uh, has passed away like forever ago. Uh, may he rest in peace. Um, but yeah, like. It, even how, like, Fred Gwynn, like, they were talking about how, like, the, um, I think the studio was kind of like, well, we don't really want Fred Gwynn because he kind of has, like, a, a stigma about him of, like, you know, from, like, his previous work with, like, the Monsters and Car 54 and stuff. They didn't, you know, we they didn't want it to be, like, a, a goofy movie or have that stigma of being a goofy movie, but Mary Lambert was like, no, we need this guy. Like, I've met him. We need him. You know, so just... Such a good, uh, you know, once again, good documentary. It goes into great deal, detail about stuff. Um, I know this uh, isn't on Netflix or anything yet, um, but I did see that it's on Amazon, but uh, it's only available to rent or buy. Um, I would say, if anything, at least rented. Uh, I know it's like $3.99 to rent. To own it, it's like 8 bucks. I'm sorry for like 8 bucks. It's not worth having like a, a physical copy. That's just me, though. Um, but what I like I said, definitely try and check this out. It is just so good. And I know, like, when I looked it up on IMVD, uh, it says, like, the runtime is, like, 75 minutes. No, it's, like, an hour and a half. Because I was kind of, like, looking at that because I was looking at some of the reviews. And it was saying, like, oh, it's a great documentary. goes into great detail about a lot of things. Talks about Fred Gwynn, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how do you fit all this in, like, 75 minutes? I feel like everything would be, like, really quick. But, no, it's a, it's an hour and a half documentary. Really good. Like I said, I just cannot see how good this is. Um, you know, I kind of see, though, too, something that I was surprised about. Um, the girl who played Ellie, uh, Blaze, something or other, I can't remember her last name. She was also in Ghost Rider, uh, the TV show Ghost Rider. 
Um, I think I may have remembered reading like years ago that she had a twin. Like, I think I vaguely remember that, but I certainly just, I must have forgotten or just wasn't fully aware of it. But yeah, she has a twin and I guess apparently um, that they use that as an advantage for this movie because they're like identical twins and like they used both girls like out or uh, blaze was credited for the movie, but they use both girls for the, um, for the Ellie character because, you know, with like child labor laws and stuff, you know, you couldn't, you know, you can't work a child actor for like, you know, for too long, for too many hours in the day. So they kind of found a loophole with her sister. So it's like her sister would be off like rusting and stuff and, not working and stuff. And then when Blaze's time was kind of like getting close to like, okay, we're getting to that, like, you know, labor law limit and everything. They're like, all right, let's get her sister in. So I, that was kind of cool that they were able to kind of like do that. And like both girls are willing. And it's like, honestly, in the movie, I can't tell which, which one's which. I can't tell the difference between the two Ellie's. I'm just saying, let me know if you guys can. But yeah, definitely check this out. Uh, that's just my little spiel about it. But till next time, you guys, as always, stay creepy, classy, and a little bit sassy.